Kyle Bass, Haven Capital founder and CIO. This has been the most telegraphed uh, occurrence over the past year that we knew this was coming. What about the tone yesterday? Was it uh, was it that spectacle with the, the former uh, Premier uh, Hin Tao that, that really shocked people, Kyle? Does it, does it mean maybe that Xi Jinping will be more strident in his uh, sort of uh, walk back from free markets? Yeah, good morning, Joe. I think it's important to note that, uh, number one, the public humiliation of, of Hu Jintao, and, and by the way, the removal uh, of any of Hu's, uh, let's say, uh, uh, thought leaders from, from the Politburo uh, was something that shocked many because he was, he was the person or one of the people that was really focused on reform and opening. Something inserted into uh, Xi's work papers that were filed back when the when the standing uh, when the uh, uh, party congress began October 16th, something changed over the weekend, and something that Matt Pottinger, Pottinger the former uh, NSC head uh, of China and the Middle East, caught over the weekend was the fact that they inserted the term "great struggle" uh, and, and replaced uh, reform and opening with "great struggle," and and are focusing on this "great struggle," and and uh, I think. That in itself was a major change on top of who Xi Jinping uh, appointed to kind of be standing there with him in the Politburo, in the Standing Committee, but also in the rest of the Politburo and the Central Commission. You know, he added two spy chiefs. He added uh, people with expertise in atomic weapons in weapons uh, procurement and in the military. And then he started changing where he was actually willing to go to war over Taiwan. Um, he said not only would he be willing to use force, uh, uh, on Taiwan, uh, if, there, if Taiwan was seeking independence, but now uh, it, he can seek a, a, a forceful resolution uh, of the reunification of Taiwan, uh, uh, even if uh, the focus is simply on uh, restoring or, or, let's say, fighting the, uh, the quote, Taiwanese separatists uh, themselves. So he changed the, the, he moved the goalpost on the war. Uh, he changed the, the document itself over the weekend. And he installed people that have never been in the Politburo before, and he removed anyone that focused on reform and opening. In fact, he sacked the technocrats uh, that were running the markets. He sacked the, uh, the head of the, of the CSRC, the Chinese equivalent of the SEC, uh, and he, he removed the person, uh, Yi Gang, from the PBOC, who wasn't even at retirement age. All of these things happen very quickly, Joe. And, and basically, the way that I see it is it looks like he installed a war cabinet and, and remove the reform and opening people that people like uh, Steve Schwartzman and, and uh, uh, Larry Fink talk about that we're, we're, we're not focused on uh, the reformers enough. We're focused, uh, we should be focused on them and not the hardliners. Well, guess what? All of the hardliners are in place now. So the, uh, the goose that laid the, the golden egg in China over the last five, 10 years has been the, the free market reforms in, in sort of their version of, of capitalism. So to make this transition with this, you know, bringing that a billion people into the middle class only happens through GDP growth, how's he going to continue to make strides there if he's, like I said, killing the goose that, that laid the golden egg, because you're not going to get the same type of growth if you don't have market reforms. Yeah, and, and <clears throat> I don't know if you guys showed it on CNBC yesterday, but, Joe, did you guys watch the, uh, uh, the press conference for the, with Merrick Garland, the USAG, uh, and, and FBI Director Ray? I mean, they, no. they, indi they indicted uh, uh, 13 people yesterday, yeah. all oh, yeah. focused on, on the Chinese national security problem, 10 of which work for the Chinese government. And they were, they were literally paying people to steal 